level. Um, I've got notes on my phones. Oh, so good. Oh, cool. cool, gl- cool glancing cool. at that, it's not because I'm bored. No, no, or no. I'm tired no. of a story. And it's if we fine. go anywhere you don't want to go, we just will move on. It's not. Fine. It's not. I'm not Paxman. I'm not. Now here you've got to two watches yet. on, I see. I've got two watches on, yeah. And one of them's just. The, the battery died recently, so oh, it's okay. annoying. So now it looks even weirder. But Yeah. What was the why? Did you have two batteries um, in the first place? I literally, I've come up with tons of stories and interviews about it. I've said that it's <laughs> a balanced thing. I is like it? to be balanced. I've said that... Uh, well, Different colours as well. Have, Gold yeah, and silver is good. You have two earrings. You have mm. two shoes. You have yeah. two gloves. Yeah. yeah. So why wouldn't you have two watches? But the reality is, I was working in a record store and I went into Argos and couldn't <laughs> at the side between the silver and the gold I bought the silver and then on my lunch break I went and bought the gold because right. I was like I, I wanted them both so amazing there's no exciting story but often yeah. I do keep them on um, and there's no one to tell you can't do that as well you exactly know? it was good like. it was good when I was touring a lot yeah. because I'd have one on local time and one on, on UK time right, right. so you know save trying where to figure out where did you tour then like you went all over it was when I was doing Music for years and years. I was doing music oh, and um, yeah, a DJ got to tour the world. Didn't I? I I I, I rapped, did, or did you? spoke. Is that what your name comes from? Yeah, yeah. So that was my. It was it was kind of my name as a street artist, and then it was my name as a spoken word artist, yeah. and then as a rapper, and then into acting and podcasting and everything else. I right. should mention I'm here with Dan Skinner. Yeah. Um, hello. And and Angelos, you know, depending, yes. hello. depending on, on where we choose to go. Um, yeah. I mean, it's an interesting point. We first met at the Edinburgh Fringe. We did, yeah. So I was doing my show. You were smashing it. At it was, I felt like <laughs> yeah. such a fraud that year because people talk about how hard the fringe is. And I did it once yeah. and had a full sold out run and it was amazing. Yeah. And it was a weird one f- 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 for me because in the two halves of the fringe, um, I had... Uh, your sh- show was performing in the second half, and the first half was keyboard Northern. It does, it's kind of uh, oh, a character. Yeah, uh, show. Um, Graham, um, Graham Fellows. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, what's his name? Jilted John. And yes, uh, oh, we'll get there. We'll get we there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Um, oh, pigeons in flight. Yeah, all that. Yeah, shit, all ex- that. I can't uh, remember I, his I, bloody I, name. I, it's killing me because I. Yeah, I love him. Um, oh, come on. I'll sit here until we I'm get getting it. stuck with Dave Spikey because it's, it's again not Dave it's not Dave Spikey. Um, oh, oh God! <laughs> he goes into Garfunkel's. He's lost his glove in Garfunkel's. Yes. Oh. It'll come back to us yeah, later. It will, it but, will. It'll just, but, it'll, but what was weird got his, was got his picture in my face. both of these shows was he was doing a new character, and your show again. Yeah. I'm a big fan of Angelos. I've I've, I've you. seen you in a, a lot of different guises, but. You, you you were doing a new character as well. Well, so well I, that's I, always going to be a harder thing to to because you're trying it out at the fringe. Just, and well, I, let me I'll tell you what we were doing was um, we were doing a show that we had. I think this was like 2013. Yeah, was it? Yeah, that that? Feels yeah. About right. So we were doing a show that we'd already taken up in 2007. Right. And we were doing what it, in, in 2007, we did the full run in one of those little shipping containers. You know, yeah, like yeah. tiny, like 30 seater yeah, venue. Yeah, yeah. And so we smashed it. We had a we had a great time. We had really good reviews, and everyone's going, "This is great." Anyway, cut to 2013. Same show, slightly different, like a couple of slightly different bits in it. Took it up, uh, did it. Thought well, we'll just do a week, see how we get on with, yeah. with the same show. Nothing. Like no yeah. one, no one cared. No one. It, you know, you just thought, oh man. And halfway through. The run, I think it was only a short run of about a week or something yeah, like that. Yeah. But halfway through the week, I was thinking, I don't like this character right, at yeah. all. You know, he's it's a horrible man. Tough, isn't it? Because again, I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd watched numerous times and loved it. But it is, it's one of them weird ones. It's I had um, Brian Gittins support me on a spoken word to yeah. once. And he would come off stage every time apologising for how <laughs> shit it was. But the beauty is, and it's similar with Angelos and... It, any yeah. character you write that is a bit awkward and meant to be almost hammy and 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 cliche is that if if it goes badly you've kind of nailed it. Yeah, well, that's, you know I mean, the, if the crowd are a bit confused and yeah. not sure if this is real or not, yeah. you've nailed it. Well, that's but it's the that's ul- tough as a performer. <laughs> it's the it's the ultimate like um, defense mechanism. Yeah, you, you yeah. set the bar so low <laughs> yeah. and your status <laughs> is so low yeah. that anything 
is, you know, anything is a bonus, any laugh, anything. You can be really bizarre and weird and they'll go, what the fuck is this? Yeah. And you go, yeah, lovely. But this other character I was doing in 2013 before you went on and, yeah. and were storming it, um, was this sort of Northern club entertainer, yeah. you know, with a, with a double act. And, and he was just very unlikable. Yeah. You know, but he was very front foot and confident, but just not very nice. And brilliant. It occurred so, to me again, halfway yeah. through, I just think, oh God, this is he's just not a very this nice is quite bloke. quite a mean person. Yeah, but, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so that's gone in the, uh, that's, that's been filed away now. That it's, one. it's interesting though, because it is, it's about finding the right time and the right slot mm. and the right place for them. And mm. I wanted to talk about that. How, how kind of tough can that be as a artist or creator when, you have one character that goes down so well and blows up, yeah. but then it's really hard to cross promote when you're trying anything new because it's so far from that person. Cause yeah. you were playing a character long, like one of the best things I saw of Angelos uh, once was when I think you suddenly have him sing. And, <laughs> and, and again, it's beautiful because you forget that you're already putting on a voice. Therefore, yeah. I, yeah. Angelos singing doesn't have to sound like Angelos would sound. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Exactly. So it was just this great jump. Well, but. I went through a phase of wanting Angelos to be really, really skilled at a number of things. Like yeah. I wanted him to be a brilliant singer. I wanted <laughs> to be a good tap dancer. Yeah. And when I was doing stuff with Bob, um, he said, I'd be great if Angelos could spin plates, actually yeah. spin plates. Yeah. And so I went up to this place in um, Stoke-on-Trent and I went to see this magician. Yeah. And he gave me a whole plate spinning like kit, Amazing. like yeah. loads of, he tried to teach me how to play, uh, how to, how to spin plates, but it turns out it's really fucking hard. <laughs> yeah, it's really yeah. hard, you know, to do it well, to do it properly. I so it. I, I just thought well, there's a reason why Agilus can't do these things because it requires graft. I, I love stuff like that. The, 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 anything that you've put a lot of time in to become good at, it's easy to get blinkered on the fact that every other area will take a lot of time to, to get yeah, because yeah. I had a similar thing. Like when I was performing a lot and doing some big stages, I was like, I wanted, it's going to sound weird as a rapper performer or whatever, but I wanted to talk t to some uh, magicians about some weird sleight of hand stuff I can do just as part of the set. Yeah. So I'm in my thing and I just do a weird thing yeah. and only a few in the front row notice it and things yeah, like that. Yeah. As soon as I started to talk to anyone, I was like, all right, that takes years of practice <laughs> yeah, exactly. and there's me like oh I'll just add a bit of magic yeah like, no you can't just add a bit of magic <laughs> exactly <laughs> it's so funny i mean but that's that's the beauty of when you watch these performers yeah they make and it you seem go, so effortless that's oh, easy isn't it yeah like they're just it, it's not it's yeah. really hard it's really hard to sort of to get into the front row and talk to people and yeah. know how to respond to them and yeah. you know and make it look like you're doing it for the first time it takes ages yeah you know? but once you've got it it's just lovely to be able to pull it out of the bag. Yeah. You know, it's a very nice sort of skill, skill to have, but it, it's, you know, it's one of those old things. It's, you know, I, I, it, it, it takes years to look that shit, yeah. you know, for Angelos, Completely. you yeah. know, it takes a long time to look that awful. Yeah. You yeah. know, um, and I'm not, you know, blowing my own trumpet, but it, it, before I was on shooting stars, I did Angelos for like about seven years, yeah. just doing gigs and having no idea what I was, going to say when i went out there yeah. no idea how to respond to an audience or you know what this person even was and um, yeah eventually over time it sort of evolves and it evolves and you get to a place where i can actually just have a conversation about anything yeah with anybody and know his attitude and his responses and yeah and that's what's know. exciting and what's engaging it's when you find a character that like I'll, I, I always use Angelos and Gittins as an example of this because of the YouTube stuff that mm. I could watch those two characters talk <laughs> yeah. about l literally anything. And I have. Yeah, uh, yeah. And it's just engaging yeah. and hilarious still because you've found, you found that character, I guess. You've found who they are. Therefore, yeah. well, we found no also, matter what situation you put them in. Also, we found the status between them. Yeah. You know, Brian yeah. is very much really frustrated with Angelos yeah. because Angelos seems to sort of glide through life. Yeah. Whereas Brian is like desperately wants things yeah. and, um, you know, and, and finds it really hard to get them. Yeah. Whereas and Angelos doesn't really give a shit and he just gets given things. Yeah. It's beautiful because you know? Angelos has got that kind of, that, that ignorant confidence yeah. in just everything. And Brian, yeah. it feels like 
Angelos is the only person he can feel above. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When, like, like, exactly. When he's around anyone else, he's the idiot. Yeah. When he's around Angelos, he's like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> but even Angelos is above him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah completely, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's a funny old relationship, that. So where did Angelos yeah. come from as a character? How ah, did you well, kind of um, find him? Angelos was actually somebody I met. Um, oh, wow. Uh, I, I used to do role play, you know, w- w- you know, when you're sort of trying to become an actor or whatever, you do these jobs. And I was doing role play work, corporate role play work mm-hmm. um, at um, a prison because they were looking for wow. new prison officers. Yeah. And um, rather than putting them through interview, they put them through these role play situations to see how they deal wow. with, you know, these different situations. Yeah. And because it was a civil service, civil service job, you didn't have to have any qualifications to sort of, you know, to, they just open it up to anyone. If yeah. you pass the role play, then that's pretty good. Yeah. So they used to bust these people in from the job center, like, oh, wow. you know, to fill yeah, quotas yeah, yeah. and all the rest of it. And just to see who was, who was suitable. And Angelos was one of those people that yeah. uh, applied for this job. And, you know, and I, and I, and I met him and I thought, Wow. That's that's good, and I and I happen to remember every word he said to me. Amazing, yeah, because it was sort of seared on my mind. And then I I was doing a sketch show with some lads that very night, like yeah. you know, after meeting this guy, and I sort of ran home and said, "Look, we were like, look who I met today." Yeah, and I did this impression of this guy that I'd met, and they said, "You've got to put that in, in the show." Yeah, and, and I said, "There's no way I can put that in the show. Yeah. It's like it's it's just." People would just go, no, you, you know, you're, it's dodgy, you know. Yeah. And they said, no, no, it's something about it. It, it just isn't. Completely. You know? and, completely. Because that's it. It is. It's, it, it, it's n- n- never felt like it's a, um, a, a poking fun at anyone. Because yeah. again, he's he, he's not all there. He's not the sharpest tool in the box. No. But it doesn't feel offensive in any way mm. of that you're playing I've often someone who's got any that. disability or anything like that. And I think part of that comes down to is. His 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 confidence is yeah. his, his short is his, his full force. Like he'll dismiss arguments with, with ease, and yeah, it's kind of and also I, he's just not a victim in any way. No, if no, anybody sort of like wants to take him on, yeah. they'll lose. Yeah, because at the end of the day, he doesn't give a shit about yeah. anything. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's just he has free reign to say whatever he likes. Yeah, but he just looks a wreck. Yeah, you know, Completely. it's great to have that amount of confidence, yeah. and then like. Just dress how you want, and you know, it's a strange old fruit. Is that else, is that handy for when you were working it out on stage as well? Because mm. you you get in embodying the character, you get to not care, and that must be the hardest thing, particularly with yeah. improv stuff or with open mics or anything else. The nerves of are they going to like it? Are they going to laugh? In that moment, you get to not care about that because yeah, because the character I, wouldn't care. And also, yeah, exactly. I think it just comes down to when you go on the stage you just have to believe that you're him yeah and yeah. he wouldn't care yeah so you know he's up there doing the best job in the world yeah. you know <laughs> in his eyes he should be at the o2 yeah. you know yeah. there's something gone wrong not just not that i'm not there but yeah. it will happen so yeah i mean it's it's uh it's just getting yourself in that mindset and like well i'm he wouldn't care yeah so i don't care and it's a dis- probably just a defense mechanism and you know getting up on stage in front of people yeah you know, completely. Any time you, you can make it something of a character, it takes all that mm. that pressure away. And it, there's no it way I, Dan Skinner, would get up on stage as a stand-up comedian, yeah, and say, "This is what I think." Isn't it funny when? Yeah, because I just don't. I, I don't. You know, I've never really aspired to be a stand-up comedian. I, right. I've never. I always wanted to be a like a comedy character actor. Yeah. That's all I wanted to do. Yeah. It just, I just sort of fell into that route because it was a, it was the sort of quickest way of getting a comedy character in front of people. And yeah. when I was in, I, I did sketch shows and all the rest of it. And, and I always found the hardest thing was being in a sketch group and then not breaking that fourth wall. Yeah. You know, it felt weird that yeah. you're in front of an audience and you were doing comedy but you were basically saying you lot aren't here. Yeah. And it yeah, just yeah, yeah. didn't, it never felt, it didn't feel live or in the moment enough right, for okay, me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, doing sketches like that. I always aspired to be talking to the audience and, yeah. you know, it, 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 just breaking down that sort of, um, 
formality. Yeah. You know, of going now we do this sketch and now yeah. we do that sketch because this. Yeah, it, it it must be handy though having a character that kind of that worked and and, f- and forced its way on stage and in stand up. Um, that must be handy as an actor because mm. I mean, there's a lot of your acting stuff I want to talk about because you've worked with some people I absolutely idolise and you've yeah. There's there's a yeah. We'll get, we'll get into all of that, but even then. It's an industry that you could have a role that wins you awards and then not have a thing for a year, yeah. for two years, yeah. you know. So yeah. it's it's something that since I've moved into acting, it's made me glad I've got the podcast. Yeah, I've got absolutely. all these other things I'm doing yeah. all the time. So yeah. Yeah. I don't mind if it's a big gap. I'll have one thing same. that feels like a massive deal the and same. then there could be a huge gap. And it means yeah. that you can be that bit more s- selective. Yeah. You don't have to be chasing every every little opportunity uh, i i i absolutely i mean i it's it gives you like a confidence and a, and a freedom yeah. to just you know think well i'm always doing what i want to be doing yeah you know i'm always either working towards a new tour show or a new yeah. like edinburgh show which i'm doing at the moment you know or or uh, you know, and even if I've got little gigs coming up, I'm always going, right, I'll, I'll try that new joke there. And yeah. it just gives me, it just gives me a sense of freedom and excitement that, yeah. you know, to go, oh, I wonder if that works, that joke's going to work. And then when it does, it's like, oh, mate, that is just a business. You know, yeah. it's such a good feeling, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, and then when, it, then when it doesn't work, you just go, oh, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, it's the, again, if it doesn't, well, you can go, oh, Angelos. Yeah. And actually, you can always get a laugh out of going, well, that was shit, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, people don't mind. Exactly. It's, it's I one... think it's, I just want to turn those live experiences into joyous experience, you know, joyful. Yeah. Like, I remember doing an episode of um, Shooting Stars once with, with uh, you know, Vicky Bob, obviously. Yeah. And, the, and we came off afterwards and it had been a riot. And yeah. Jim sort of bounded up to me and goes, that was great. It was like a rock and roll comedy circus. Yeah. And I thought that's what, that's what I want my live stuff to be like. Yeah. Just mayhem and just everyone like chipping in if they want. And yeah. like, just you know, just like it, it just, you know, sometimes I'll take that joke and then I'll put that at the end and I'll put that bit up the front and, yeah. you know, just mix it all up and it's, throw it's, it up in the air. It's beautiful as well because it can afford the interaction because the, the goal often of any of the the worst parts of the audience is to, to, to get one over on the comic, to heckle, to be yeah, a funny person. Exactly. When you've got a character like Angelos, the point is that everyone is getting one over on him. So you literally can't win because he can just... I know. It's like arg- arguing, arguing with a child coming. Yeah, it's like, exactly. You can't win that. No. The and audience because, member could come up with the wittiest retort of all. Exactly. And he can just like... But I can off. just... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I can just go cock and balls, mate. And <laughs> and it's, you know, basically I can just hit the lowest common yeah. denominator yeah. and it's all still okay because it's Angelos. Yeah, you know? I love it. How, how did sh- a sh- a Shooting Stars come about? Because that's where a lot of people, you know, were first introduced Mm. to Angelos as a character and it really did just I remember him being just a guest host the yeah. first time I saw him and I was like panel. who is this guy and then it was just this is now a key part of the show this, the, <laughs> yeah. this guy is more important than the guests they've got on and all that kind of thing so, so how did it all come about well that's is a good story yeah <laughs> I used to have a little um you know a little camera with a tape yeah. You know, you put tape in it and, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. a video camera. And I sat on my bed. Well, actually, I was doing the Armstrong and Miller show yeah. sketch in Lucy Montgomery. Right. And I, I kept sort of annoying her with Angelos and <laughs> just putting notes under her dressing room door. Right. Seeing Angelos is writing saying, we need to talk, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like that. Right. And then eventually said, you, you know, who would like this? And he said, Bob would like this, Bob Mortimer. I went, oh, right. okay. She says, send it to you, Bob. I love the idea of that as a leave me alone. Rather than a helpful bit of guidance. <laughs> Can you please stop this? Yeah. Go over here and do it. Go and hassle him with it. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'll go over and hassle him with it. So I thought, all right, well, I, and I sat on my bed and got my video camera and uh, I made this little video and I said, um, for Christ's sake, Mortimer, it's about time you gave me a job and it is just getting ridiculous now. Uh, I'd never met him. <laughs> and um, I said, I can do anything. I can shift boxes and all that stuff and move that from there to there and put that back there. But this is getting stupid now. So, so please get in touch with me. And I made this video 
and I put it in an envelope and I scribbled all over the envelope and I got a napkin and I wrote a message, a scrawled message to him in pencil and saying, this is my video at last, please give me a job from, um, from Angelos. Thinking nothing, you know, yeah. thinking that's fun. And I bunged it off to him and they rang me like, you know, a week Amazing. later saying, we've got your video. Amazing. I was like, what? I was honestly. Am I in trouble? <laughs> it was really, really, it, you know, it. it was really bizarre. It's great because again, I Lisa think... Clark ran me the producer and said, Bob, Bob would like to meet you. It's beautiful. Cause I think there is a lot of luck in all of these industries. There's timing. There's the, there's the right thing in the right place. You happening to meet that guy in that prison at, at that yeah, time. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. There's also people then underestimate the things that people do to, to force that luck, mm. to make that happen. Mm. No one had asked you for that tape. No, Do you exactly. Know what I mean? it's, exactly. It's, it's, it's similar. There's been so, uh, so many things in my career that I'll be working on for months, and I'll be explaining to, to people. No one's asked me to write this script or to work yeah. on this. I'm working on it in the hope that someone will want to see it. And yeah. Because I was aware that that's how I did my first album. I had no profile or name, and we did our first album, and it ended up being in the charts and stuff like that, and that was exciting. But it's that realization that I put loads of work into that when no one was interested. Yeah. And exactly. that's what's then then that luck does come into it as you get that break. But still, it's all that work prior to but that. But I, I don't... I, I, when you're doing that stuff, it doesn't feel like work. No. It feels like, well, this is fun. Yeah. You know, it's fun to do it. You know, it feel, it starts to feel like work when, you know, when people go, right, what, what, what are you going to do now? We're going to do... And you go, yeah. oh, it feels like work. <laughs> yeah, but, completely. But, you know, it, at the beginning, it's just like... no one had any anticipation. Uh, yeah, like it's like, at the beginning, enjoyable. it's just like, I play this dickhead. Yeah. And, you know, I annoy people with him. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's just fun. And it was funny, like sending that video off to Bob, people said, cool, that was, that took balls to do that. Yeah. And I was thinking it really didn't take balls. It's just like, honestly, it was a, just a bit of fun. Send it off and forget about Send it. Send it off and don't worry about yeah. it. You know, I wasn't thinking, when are they going to ring? Because yeah. if, if I was thinking that I wouldn't have written a handwritten note on a napkin, yeah. you know, yeah. I would have yeah. written a proper letter yeah. or gone through my agent or something like that, Completely, you know, and that's it. The thought there is that it's, 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 it's it was easy for you to do. It's throwaway. It might mm. catch attention. If it doesn't, you're exactly. going to assume that, that no one ever saw it. Yeah. And also no harm, I, no I, if it doesn't happen, I'll just keep going around doing these little pubs and, yeah. and, you know, and, and keep doing that because it's fun, Yeah, you know, and it's, and 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 for a long time after I did shooting stars and after I toured and all the rest of it, it stopped being fun. It stopped. It felt like oh fucking hell, this is a grind. You know, going yeah. out there and sticking my jaw out and doing all this stuff. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. it was it stopped being fun. And then I started to doing a podcast and then I did a radio show with Alex Lowe, Barry from Watford. Yeah. And and then we did a tour. And then I thought, oh, I wonder, I wonder what Angelos would be like on his own again. Yeah. And I just booked some really little pub gigs, you know, little just mixed bill stand up gigs and yeah. started doing those again. I thought, Oh my God, this is such good fun. Yeah. You know, and it's, and I'm just, I'm doing it again now. How, just, how, how, how was that when Angelo started to get that attention? Because he's mm. a character again, it's similar to Gittins, similar to kind of a Neil Hamburger and people like that, who yeah. I think so much of what is amazing about them is those, unique interactions those moments in the live show but as soon as you start to do good commercially the thought is going to be right well we need or it's changing now because of digital but we need a special on dvd and mm. hmv at christmas mm. and we need mm. this and need that how was that to kind of go through because again he's not necessarily it, it it makes me think although i think a uh, sean Locke is an amazing stand-up i think where he's l at his absolute best is on panel shows just talking and engaging his stand-up's still great, but that's mm. the best place for him. So it seems odd that people go, you're amazing in this scenario. Now we want you in this scenario that yeah. isn't exactly the same, but that's what we're used to, and that's how we yeah. sell you and market you. And I don't know, you know, I, it, was, it was hard. It was hard work. Yeah. And it was, and it was, you start to feel like you're plonking yourself into places that you were never intended to be. Yeah. And it's, it was hard for me to articulate what I mean, yeah. but it's just a feeling, you know, yeah, where yeah. you start to go, this little man w was never meant to be <laughs> yeah. here or, yeah. you know, or there, you know, 
and it's he's a, just a bit of a chancer and, yeah. and now it's sort of got to this stage yeah <laughs> um and then people sort of start to wade in and go well what is this you know yeah. what is it and you go well it was never meant for you yeah. you know it was it, it was just it wasn't meant to be judged in this way yeah you know it, it was meant to be fun for people that came to see it and fun for it people that enjoy it completely because it, it's it's a it's a it's a strange he's a strange character you know it's, just, it's it. not Again, for everyone it's, you know? it's the misunderstanding as well that that comedy is a product rather than an art form um mm. I, I heard, mm. heard frankie That's boyle what... talking a while ago about um, i think it was on, on on russell brand's podcast about even the biggest most mainstream comedy shows are listened to or are seen by something like 10% of the country. If I mean, and that's a big deal these days, 10% would be a huge amount of the country. Yet when there's a Frankie Boyle scandal or whatever else, you're taking that bit and showing it to all these people who it's not meant for. Yeah. Like like you're not meant to get this comedy. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's someone else has come and, and, for, and forced you to watch this. I never came to your house yeah, and, sh- and showed exactly. you this. Someone else has gone, everyone yeah. has to look at this. And you're like, yeah. no, it's, it's, it's no, not for no, you. No. It's for these people exactly. here that and understand like, but, it and that get the tone and, and the And I think that's the difference between something like comedy and music. Yeah. Where, you know, music, a good pop song is a good pop song, yeah, man. Yeah, like completely. everyone, it just clicks something in the brain. And, you know, whether you, whether you think, oh, I don't like hearing that song anymore but it makes me tap along and I yeah. just, comedy's yeah. not like that. Yeah. Com- comedy is, you know, there are comedians that go for that, yeah. and, you know, go for the mass like appeal and they're brilliant at it. Absolutely yeah. brilliant at it. Completely. But there are many, many comedians. It's such a, you know, it, it, it's such a unique and um, personal experience comedy and, yeah. and it's it really comedy is not for everybody you know specific types of comedy is not for everybody and completely because it's a weird one that it then became such a stadium thing and again that it's the fact that we just refer to comedy as comedy like mu- music yeah, yeah, has exactly. rap yeah. has rock has all of this so there's there's yeah, all these different yeah. things over in it and, 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 and comedy's the same there's know, it's funny uh, isn't it M- michael mcintyre is nothing like tim key yeah, and 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 Eddie Murphy is nothing like you know exactly. Angelos. I mean, yeah. so it's these, it's knowing people having their mind. Oh, I love comedy. It's a exactly. laugh. Oh, it's a laugh, isn't it? Let's yeah. go and see some comedy. It's like, well, what kind of comedy are you into? <laughs> yeah, exactly. what, what is this? Exactly. And yet, the Edinburgh Festival every year there's an award for the best comedy. Yeah, it's ludicrous. And you it? think, mm, you know, it's it is ludicrous. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Um, I don't know how they even come okay, to the yeah. decision of. A, you know, a mate of mine, uh, Rob Alton, who I'm a big fan of, he's an amazing performer. It's kind of comedy, kind of poetry, all sorts of stuff. But I've never seen someone, I've never seen him as stressed out as when he won Joke of the Fringe in the Sun because <laughs> he was really worried because his show isn't. It was the only joke he had in his show. Yeah, he had l- literally that year he had one actual joke in his show, and it won Joke of the Fringe. And his thought was, right. everyone's going to come. Yeah, expecting gags and it's not yeah, it's an yeah, hour yeah. long show that had one joke in yeah and again that again, you know it shows how stupid and subjective it is i like, think you should be i got joke of the fringe and he was like fuck i yeah. got joke of the fringe i don't know what yeah to do. yeah this is I terrible build on this yeah. but i think most comedians <laughs> operate on the i mean i i don't i don't know because do you know to be honest with you i don't know that many conventional stand-ups i yeah. know i know the sort of the curious people yeah but i don't know like you know how normal stand-ups think but I, I most people that i know like people to find their stuff yeah. you know like people to discover their stuff rather than you going out there going come and see this come, come and see my this. stuff yeah. you know it's it's basically if i go to a, do a little pub gig or something yeah and somebody pops in that's you know doesn't know who i am and they leave going Oh, he was funny, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah that yeah. to me is like it's that's everything. You yeah, know, that's what completely. that's what I strive to it's, do. It's, I think it's knowing the right place and the right kind of audience rather than focusing on the numbers. I yeah, remember, uh, but I, also when I was touring a lot. I turned ended up turning down a lot of New Year's Eve's gigs because they paid a lot. And my thought was, as a band, to do a forty minute or an hour long set on New Year's Eve, no one w- w- wants yeah. that on New Year's Eve. Yeah, you want to hear. 
just hits yeah, and songs absolutely. that you know if we're doing a 40 minute set there's going to be a lot of stuff in there that you don't know so well yeah it's new year's eve that's not the place <laughs> for that so my exactly. thought was always if, if you want to yeah. book us to maybe come and play our two biggest songs yeah then sure but you could just play them off a cd and yeah. get just just get a, a reaction and moment yeah I, I mean i i i still like you know i, I the thing about angelos is that he had a, he had a nice peak yeah but even then, even that, it was no, it was no like Mickey Flanagan or, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. it, it was, it was nothing like that. Yeah. You know, it was just like fairly, you know, got to do a DVD and all the rest of it. And I still like going to places, you know, the back of beyond going somewhere yeah. and people discovering this character. Yeah. I still, you know, I, 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 and seeing people seeing this person for the first time and go, Oh, that person's really funny, you know, yeah. cause, yeah. cause, I, I suspect someone like Mickey Flanagan or Michael McIntyre can't do that now because yeah. they are just everybody knows There's so all much their of stuff. A preconception on them all, already. It's it's mm. really weird. And, and Michael McIntyre is a great example because I remember seeing him years ago at, at Latitude, not knowing who he was, and he was the funniest thing I saw yeah. all weekend. Just slayed me. Since he's got big. I've not enjoyed any of his sets. And that's probably because of my own mindset and my own approach well, because I'm going, oh, yeah. it's Michael McIntyre. Well, you know, yeah. Rather than just enjoying it for what it is. My yeah. own bias has got in the way of that. Yeah. Yeah. When yeah. I saw him and didn't know anything about him, I was like, this is hilarious. Yeah, exactly. I think that's it. And it's sort of discovering it. And maybe all comedians feel that way. I don't know. Yeah. And I think that's what comes. And then and then that brings a certain pressure onto you yeah. that that is not you know, it's not pleasant because then you're just writing comedy or writing jokes to stay at a certain level exactly. rather than exactly. doing something that you enjoy doing. You know, yes. I was like Neil Young used to say, fuck the fans, man. Yeah. You know, just, yeah. I'm just going to write an album that it's, I want to do. It's a massive yeah. thing when you realise that when you wrote the material that got you to where you are, you didn't have an audience. Mm. So you didn't write it for an audience. Then when you get there, you suddenly feel pressured. Oh, or what do they want to hear? Yeah. It's like, well, you weren't thinking that when you created no. the stuff that they did want to hear. So you've yeah. got to try and focus. And it's not easy to do, but you've got to try and block what do they, they want to hear out and go, what's what's funny for me or what, you know, yeah. what do I enjoy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I want to talk more about your, your acting in general. Cause yeah. Because you've done s s s some great s stuff in recent years. Um, I'm going to start with, it's interesting because it wasn't until... I saw it advertised. I realised that we've got another link here. So the last time I saw you, yeah, I know you're was say. at Old Street. Yeah, I was on my way. In. I was on my way to audition yeah. for a film called Notes on Blindness, yeah. and we bumped into each other. And I didn't tweak that you'd been as well. We just, oh, yeah. it was good to say hello. Yeah. And it was. I think I think you were just coming back. I think. I wasn't. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, I maybe. was just going, and you yeah. had. Oh, maybe you were going because you had headphones in. Yes. No, that's right. You were going there and I was coming back because you were, you had headphones in and, and you said, I'm off to an audition. Yeah. And I thought, he'll be listening to the lip sync. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How crazy was that? And again, I didn't realise so right. And it's a really interesting one because it was the first audition I'd had that I didn't want to get. And not because it, it wasn't great, but because it was my third or fourth audition. Mm. And I thought it was amazing, but I didn't think I was ready for it. Right, so it was yeah. one of them that I was... Hugely excited to be there. And I'll explain a bit for those who don't know. As a Notes on Blindness was this amazing film that was, it was a documentary all based on the audio tapes of a guy called John um, M. Hull, who who went blind and decided to record kind of an audio diary. Yeah, of his, of his, of his experience. He, of his he experience. was, he was, he was blind. Uh, he was going blind yeah. since uh, he had some, he had eye trouble when he was very young and he was yeah. going blind, you know, but it was only when he was about 40 that he completely lost his son yeah. just before the birth of his first son. Yeah. And, and he um, was a teacher. A yeah. He was an academic. And, you know. He was a, um, a theologian. And that's a big part of it, the, his theology yeah. and his belief and his faith, mm. because it's, and he, he wrote this book called touching the rock about his experience of going completely blind. Yeah. And he made these audio tapes um, of his experiences. And some of them are very dark and very difficult to, to listen to because they're very personal and yeah. very touching. And these two guys, uh, James Spinney and Pete Middleton, mm. two directors, read this book, contacted 
uh, John and yeah. said, do you have any, you know, can we, can we make a film out of this? And he said, yes. And I've got all these audio tapes. Yeah. And they said, I'm like, you know, blimey. And so they created this, they weaved this narrative and this story out of these audio tapes and, um, just, you know, made a documentary. And it was only, it was only, um, it, it was sort of quite far down the process that, it, that they decided to get somebody in yeah. to play John Hull yeah. and to lip sync to these tapes. And that's what and was that's, absolutely amazing and engaging. I'd never s- s- seen it was, yeah, the, the, the lead actor is playing the lead character, but it's the real lead character's voice, voice there and all that. And it was yeah. absolutely amazing. I thought yeah. it was beautifully shot. Visually, it was just wonderfully surreal in places and yeah. dramatic and the i mean it's not giving any spoilers but it was amazing to hear the kind of the film cliche of rain being important to a blind person because it really gives dimension all that hearing that as a reality mm. for john and the way that's played out inside and outside some yeah. really dramatic and beautiful scenes yeah, and yeah yeah so how was that to be part of because you've got the pressure of you're playing a living person and you're trying to represent them and do them them justice and also you you it's the lip sync part i think mm. the reason i was asked in at such an early point in my career was cuz i come from music and music videos is all lip sync so as, as soon as i was in the in in the in, in the first yeah. audition they were like this must have been easy for you and i was like no not at all cuz i'm <laughs> lip syncing the stuff that's on yeah. a beat and on a rhythm yeah. not that's broken up and yeah. spoken and yeah yeah and also you've got a great big beard you've got a great big and beard and I think that's yeah. a big old selling point because when I went in I had an enormous beard as yeah. well I thought they're just getting everyone in with beards yeah they're getting the beard people in <laughs> yeah but it was um, yeah it was you know it was, it was uh, when, when they sent that through and they said we'd like you to lip sync to these to this I thought well this bit will be lip synced yeah and then that you know that'll probably be it and so I'd you know, I just did it. I set about, you know, um, learning how to sort of lip sync to this bit of dialogue. Yeah. And it's hard because it's not only yeah. lip syncing the dialogue, it's the coughs, the it's stutters, the breaths, the the breaths. Yeah. because he suffered from asthma as well. Yeah. So there's a lot of that in there and you had yeah. to try and factor that in as well. It's a fascinating run even to just audition for, to get that touch of trying to learn yeah. that motion and learn. But I think for someone yeah, like me, um, it was great it was perfect because you know you can get obsessed with that sort of stuff yeah and obsessed with getting it absolutely perfect every moment every yeah moment, and yeah. and it just appealed to me in that in that respect yeah. really i just and i just had these headphones in i was just listening to this thing and i just did it over and over and over again and then you've got it lip sync it and you have to act it or you yeah. have to you have to uh, adopt an attitude you know and you've got to be blind as well yeah so there's a few things going on there's a lot going on yeah and and i and, and i just uh, i just i could just do it yeah. you know and, and that's i think that's what it comes down to really yeah. i think you just oh yeah i just yeah okay. i could i could do this yeah in the same way that i saw um simone's audition yeah she was playing john's wife yeah um and i watched her audition i thought perfect man she yeah. she could she could do it as well yeah and, and i don't know that it's it's not something you'd ever get taught in drama school. No. It's just that something that you, you, you have know, to try I and, suppose you have to try and see if you can do it or see, not. And that's, that's the, the beautiful point there is it's something that you have to learn in stages that you'll get the lip sync nailed and then you realise that you're lip syncing but completely focused. Yeah, on, exactly. On that. It's like, no, this is on camera. This isn't. Yeah. This, you have otherwise to find you wouldn't a way of doing it and looking, you know. Yeah. Uh, philosophical and yeah. you know just uh, yeah you have to put meaning behind the lip syncing yeah. as well that's that was the and it's it's i mean thing. it's a fascinating story in its it itself is. because the fact that again he kind of realized as he was going blind that at that point there weren't a great deal of academic books on tape yeah so a lot of the books on tape were, would have been kind of it was just novels. R- novels and romance and yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. So he s- set about getting friends and himself and all, the, all sorts of people hmm. to start to record all these academic books so that he could continue to be an academic, continue yeah. to learn, continue yeah. to to develop. It was interesting because when I got asked in for it, I got the email through and the breakdown. And the first thing I did, I had to email my agent to say, can you let the guys know that 
I'm working on a script that's about someone going blind and recording an audio diary, essentially. Like, I've been working on that on that for ages. It's incredibly different from, yeah, from, yeah. from John's true life experience. But it panicked me because I was like, I don't want anyone to think that Absolutely, I've, I've yeah, heard about yeah. this. And, and then, then I'm going to take oh, the right, idea. That sounds good. Yeah. So it was, yeah. literally the first email back was that. And then it was like, so as long as they know that, I'll, yeah. I'm happy to come Absolutely. in, but I'm scared of this. But yeah. it was yeah. fascinating to watch, yeah, all the realities of that, all the things that, the fact that he found, I don't know, he found by the end, he found a greater focus mm. and a greater drive because he had less mm. distractions as such. The fact that he couldn't yeah. just, 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 or, or, or the fact that he woke up and was instantly kind of in emptiness as such. Yeah. There seemed to be a greater drive to feel that, to continue well, I, to educate. I, th- I think um, Marilyn, his wife, yeah, you know, she summed it up perfectly, really, saying the book really is about loss. Mm. You know, it's, it's um, yes, it's about adaptation. It is about going blind and, and finding a new way of doing things. But it's about loss. Yeah. Because... You know, he was at a loss. You know, he, yeah. he 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 lost his sight. He thought he'd lost his career. He didn't know. He, he he had to basically start again. And it's like, how do you come to that sort of understanding? And how do you adapt? Yeah. How do you become? You know, how and, and also his faith is a, it's a massive test of faith for him yeah. because why? It, you know, he's been a you know a believer all his life. Why would God do such a thing to him? And he had to square that in his head Completely. as well. You know, he had to, he had to say, well, okay, well the Bible doesn't appear to be written for blind people, no, you know, it, and it's, it, it, he had to, in the end, I think the last lines of the film are, it's, it's a gift, you know, it's not a gift I want. It's not a gift my children to want, yeah. but it is a gift. And yeah. now I have to work out what I'm going to do with this, yeah. you know? And, um, in the end, um, you know, it, by the end, he just sort of referred to it all as a, bit of a nuisance yeah, yeah you know rather than something that would sort of you know cripple and that's what i love his how life. kind of how grand it began and how small it became as a as mm. as 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 something that he was taking in the fact that by the end it was as i said it was this kind of this is this is frustrating but it yeah. it, it didn't feel like the end of the world anymore. yeah at absolutely. the start it felt like the end of the world at the end as you said it felt like more of a nuisance yeah uh, a, yeah. a slight a slight frustration so another yeah. film that I wanted to talk to you about um, mm. is High Rise. Yes. Ben Wheatley is absolutely yeah. amazing. I think he's one of the best that that Britain's got. And High Rise was hugely exciting to hear it was happening and to see the yeah. early visuals because it felt like the first time he's had, or I don't know, pulled out of the kind of the surreal realism that he's known for, the grittiness he's known for. And yeah. then it's suddenly this... U- utopian slick crazy world dystopian right? yeah dystopian <laughs> yeah. completely yeah. yeah yeah absolutely so how was that to work on and, and, that be, was, and be part of it it's, it's a story of essentially a time in the future where essentially everyone lives well it's a funny old community thing is, lives inside this high rise and there's a hierarchy in class and that's it there's, there's so a so there's forth. a few it's a it's a it's a futuristic view of the seventies. Yeah. So it's you know, probably set in the seventies. Yeah. But it's a futuristic view of this. I think it was written about nineteen seventy six or something like yeah. that. But it's a it's like how would this but but it's still set in the seventies, but a futuristic weird futuristic and that's view of it. Beautiful because it was around then that people like a a, a Le Corbusier was 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 a designer of 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 an, an architect and he came up with designs and, and the theory that in the future we would have everything we need in one building mm. and that was seen as a positive thing yeah you, you could now look at it as essentially a prison or the, the fact that we never have to leave this one exactly. place at that point it was seen as well wow, imagine if we never had to leave well this is sort our, of the- our, our doorstep essentially and on the bottom floor you've got the library the shop everything you yep. need well, we are. That was pretty, seen as an exciting thing. We yeah. are pretty much there now. It's not far off, is it? With yeah, online we're, ordering and everything yeah, else honestly, as well. Everyone, yeah, I, we're obsessed with convenience, yeah. you know, and and have have little idea actually what it's doing to us. You Completely. know, I couldn't um, agree more. And I think convenience is the biggest selling point of everything these days. Mm. I think people talk about, particularly coming from the music industry, how do we stop pirating of music and things like that? It's like 
convenience. Yeah. The, the, yeah. the reason digital sales, sales exist still is it's easier on my phone to click and pay 49p on iTunes than yeah. it is to go and find a torrent, download it on my computer, yeah. transfer it across to my phone, so yeah. on and so forth. Convenience. And yeah. Amazon as well, the one-click yeah. ordering on Amazon. It's Absolutely. like that. I can't, that, that I, did a lot of damage, I think, on <laughs> on the internet because as a as an artist who'll be pr- promoting tours and stuff, if people have to l- look at your tweet, then click to another page, then click to another page, and then buy, yeah, a lot of people uh, won't because we're so used to. I want to just be able to go. There you go. It's done. Yeah, exactly. It's mad. I know. I know. It really is. And you know, there's there's good uh, as with everything is there's you know there's there's uh, there's good and bad to it, but. Of course. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm grateful that people still turn out for live, yeah, live comedy, you, yeah, you know, or live live stuff. People yeah. that seems to be a really big thing. I mean, there's more comedy happening, you know, yeah, now than 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 there there's ever been. I think, and that's um, so pleasing. Yeah, it's, it's great. Real and there and only. I don't know what moment. it's like for live music. I, th- I suppose it that's is, quite healthy as yeah, well, isn't it? It's 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 the same. It's still it's that thing. And I remember when I did because I've stopped doing music for a bit because the acting has become such an exciting thing for me. Yeah. But um, I remember the last time we played Glastonbury, we were posting about it. We're playing on Billy Bragg's stage. Yeah. It's going to be amazing. Blah, blah. And I had tons of people online saying, uh, uh, where can I watch this? I was like, in the tent. That's yeah. It. Yeah. That's and it, it's such yeah. a weird yeah. thing. I, it's what I love about live yeah. comedy and live music now is, mm. You've got to be there to experience it. Otherwise, exactly. it's nothing to do with. And that's you. what I I find exhilarating, exciting to be yeah. on a stage in front of people doing something, yeah, and saying something that I didn't say last night, yeah, because there's somebody there that wasn't there last night, yeah, you know, and that's that's a reason for people to come and watch something because it's like moment. everyone get together and experience something, yeah. you know, together, and that's you know that's a great thing. You just can't get that on, you know, if you sit at home on your own yeah. looking at Facebook and, and I mean, totally. there's, there's plenty of great things about those things, yeah, but it's just, you know, it's, we keep an eye on it. It's anyway, back to High Rise. Yes. Yes. Right. At High Rise. That's where we came, that's where we arrived at. Because um, it was so beautifully yeah. shot, the yeah, script man. is amazing, everything mm. just looked beautiful. It, as I said, you're right, it, it was that perfect combination of retro and futuristic mm. in one go, which are two of the visually sexiest things on screen anyway if you have it retro it looks all sunburnt and uh, yeah you know yeah. B- b- blown out nice but if you have it futuristic you've got the slickness so yeah it was, it was a, a great, great design and it was a it was a great tone the film had a Completely. really good tone every, every character had some underlying sleaze yeah absolutely there was no yeah, clear yeah. here's the good guys here's the bad yeah, guys exactly. everyone you were a little bit and then everyone had kind of redeeming parts as well. And your character mm-hmm. was quite a dark character, but there yeah. was points as well where you're like, oh, there's a softness there or there's an intent there. You can see why he's been pushed in this Yeah, exactly. And, like and that. that's, it is a reason, yeah. you know. You, and, and Ben, I think himself said, it's not a fight between the upper classes and then the lower classes. Right, it's a yeah. fight between the upper middle classes and the lower middle classes. Yeah. And he said, that's a really grubby battle, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. That's a really grubby battle because it's because yeah. it's just like I want that you know yeah. and I should have that you yeah. know rather than I'm down here and I've got nothing and you know maybe I could have that it's 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 it's, it's, it's where it's it's <clears throat> it's a beautiful portrayal of of of, of society because that's w- w- where the conflict is like, again mm. I was listening to someone talk the other day I can't remember who um, but yeah it's the upper classes are above impressing each other. Mm. They're there. And the lower classes are surviving. Yeah. So it is these middle class areas that you're trying to be better than that person. Yeah, you're exactly. trying to impress them. Exactly. The upper classes don't give a shit if you're... In, like, you're not going to impress them because they're, yeah. they're doing their thing. They're up there. Exactly. So it is. It's that that weird middle ground, which in the UK is ever-expanding. Yeah, ever that's extending. it. And that's it makes it. this ugly competition, I guess. Yeah. And I, what I liked about playing Simmons was that yeah. he... He was perhaps the one character that that was, you know, he was a he was bottom of the rung, yeah, yeah. And he happened to be working for the guy right at the top, yeah. And so there was this disdain and hatred for this bloke he was working for, yeah. You know, and everybody else in this building, you yeah. Know, he just looked down his nose at everyone, 
even yeah. though he was probably the lowest guy on the rung. It's you know, a beautiful it's a very strange a juxtaposition of that of being at the bottom, but because of purely circumstance, you're mm. getting the view from the top. Exactly, literally it's like, and figuratively. It's like, yeah, it's, like a, it's like it's like it's like a doorman yeah. working on a club in Mayfair. Yeah, you know, it's completely. like that. I've got a lot of power. Completely, yeah. But I can't bear any of you. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, it's a funny old act you have to put on, and and yeah. Uh, yeah so it was, um, yeah, it was it was it was a great experience, and Ben just made it very very easy. I, was I mean, say how was he to work with? Because it feels like everyone I know's worked with, and every and purely from even if I didn't know people who worked with him from watching, it feels like a real collaborative effort. It always mm. feels like um, the actors, the DOP, the director, everyone is just equal in this you know they're all pulling together and all kind of excited to be going in yeah in what you're creating um i mean ben is like the complete driving force yeah you know yeah. obviously and amy the writer his, yeah. his wife um and it's it, and he and he basically he sticks rigidly to the script yeah and in fact he calls that the instructions you know the instruction manual yeah and he sort of writes refers to the instructions yeah right like, what do we do now brilliant, you brilliant. know and that's a very he, traditional a way of working as well because yeah, that's kind but, of changed a lot in modern society that it's felt that um that the 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 script is a loose guideline and the director must create the, yeah. the art piece whereas I, in a lot of the best french cinema and things like that you look at any of them old scripts and you could literally i could effectively direct it because it's literally yeah. like it's written as an instruction manual it's yeah. written like here's what it is exactly and i think and also i think something that. uh, something as complicated as that book mm. you know that that uh high, high rise course, book yeah you you couldn't really um, yeah you couldn't wing that because <laughs> yeah. it's like an enormous amount of characters yeah. and they all have to sort of do what they're going to do throughout the yeah you know throughout the film and so it, and it forces has, a rigidity yeah to absolutely the, the, the and structure that's you know it, you, if you start sort of saying oh, you know it then the, everything is there for a reason yeah and you have and and the writer writers have spent a long long time getting you know getting all those reasons in place and all those yeah. motivations and you know all those plot points you know and you don't want to start messing with any of that so yeah. it's just easier just to sort of flick through the script and just yeah. do it exactly do it as is yeah, yeah exactly um but yeah i mean i was i was um thrilled to be part of that it, ben just sort of said do you want to come and be in this film and i went yeah all right you know, yeah, she's come in so. and come in and uh try out then i said yeah. okay and i did and uh, he said yeah great lovely you know and then I and then because again it is there's 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 so much luck in this as i keep saying but also that's that's because you will have made an impression on him at some point down the line well that, it, so it's it's not luck it's that no that, that relationship is built exactly and when you're creating something that you're going to be working on for several months or whatever, you need to know that the people you're going to work with, number one, are capable. Number one, you enjoy, are yeah, bearable, exactly. or in, you know, in good yeah, to be yeah, around. Yeah. And that's why these things yeah. can come about in such a way. Well, that it's just, ben do, had, do you want to come um, and try out for this? <laughs> ben had directed a lot of the Vic and Bob sketches for Shooting Stars. Right, right. So that's, oh, um, that. that's yeah, that's how that had come about. And yeah. then, um, um, he's, yeah, come and, come and have a go at this. <laughs> I yeah. said, okay. Uh, but it was a little bit of a, it was daunting because, yeah. you know, you sort of hanging around the hotel with Sienna Miller and Tom Hiddleston yeah. and, uh, James Purefoy and Jeremy Irons, yeah. you know, you just think, well, this is a strange old, um, jump up from yeah. mucking around with Vic and Bob. Yeah, yeah. You know, but you just, you just crack on, didn't you? Do you take anything from, from Angelos in those those situations, from Angelos's outlook of like, let's just get on with it. All right, we're here. I well, I think you know, be fine. Angelos isn't a million miles from me. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. So there's sort of parts of me that just has to go right. Well, dive in and yeah. uh, and and just crack on. I mean, I've done a lot of acting. Yeah. So yeah. it's not like I just hadn't done, you know, what you would call drama, I suppose, yeah. or serious serious drama. Um, but it, it's not. You know, again, as long as you've got an attitude and, yeah. you know, you, you know how you're supposed to be towards that person and Completely. what you feel about that person, then, uh, yeah. And the, and the writing is all there. And that's it. I mean, often 
that there's so much going on that you don't have that much time to worry about it until yeah, afterwards. Absolutely. I, I had similar with a, a, a Taboo, that my third acting gig, and it's Tom Hardy and Stephen Graham. Yeah. And, and written by Stephen Knight and all of this. And I'm sitting there like, every <laughs> now and then, it'd be just as I'm going to bed, I'd be like, this is mad. And yeah, it, yeah, This is a yeah, bit yeah, mental. Know, but other than that, it was like, right, here's what I need to do tomorrow. Here's yeah. what I need to have ready. Here's what I need to do. Yeah. So you didn't have that time yeah. to kind of... Over, well, I, I, felt like, I felt like that more with shooting stars than I did with, yeah. like, and you know, any of the films, because shooting stars and Vic and Bob were, if anyone said, Dan, what is it you want to do? I say, well, I want to be on that show yeah. with those guys doing what I want to do. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened. So like every, every, every show after every show, uh, after every show we recorded, I was expecting a phone call the next day going, all right, that's it, Dan, you're, you're, you're how, fired now. <laughs> how was that initially then? Cause again, it's, it's, there is even more pressure there. Um, because it was the return of shooting star. So it was already, an established yeah, group of people exactly. who all know each other, who've all been doing yeah. it for years. Well, that's who what they're Bob excited said. to be having a reunion. Mm. And there's a guy at the reunion who it wasn't there the first didn't time. Didn't go to this school. Yeah, exactly. He's you know, kind of just there, but he's got to be part of it. So well, how was that? This was this is when I because Bob said after coming to see me do a gig, Bob invited me down to um, you know to muck, muck around in the audition room yeah. with with him and Jim Vic. Yeah. Matt Lucas, Jack D, Ulrika. Wow. Um, and there was a couple of other uh, comedians there as well. And um, and Bob's always very candid about this sort of stuff and he's very yeah. um, honest and open and straightforward. And he said, Dan, he said this, he came over to me before we started. He said, Dan, this is going to be really hard for you yeah. <laughs> because yeah. we, we all know each other. Yeah. Oh, so it's easy for us. So you're just going to have to chip in. But that's what it's going to be like you know, when we actually do the show, so you might as well get used to it now, you know, but it's going to be hard. Yeah. I went, oh, thanks, Bob. Anyway, so I just bung my hair down and I, and, and they were all chatting away, doing stuff. And I thought, well, if I don't chip in and just go jump in both feet, then I'm just not going to say anything. Yeah. So I just sort of said, I said to them, how long is this going to take? Because I've got to go home. So, you know, I don't know what you think you're doing, but if we don't start this soon. <laughs> and they were so disarmed by it. Yeah. And it just made me feel like, okay, well, if I can be that brutal in my <laughs> opening yeah. comments, yeah. then I'll, then I'll be okay. But I had to, I had to go in hard. Again, it gives you, it gives you f f free license to be as brutal. Yeah, exactly. As possible, People can only ever get offended by or angry at Angelos, and you you get to turn him off as soon as exactly. you walk off set. It's like they're not angry me, at that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sorry Everybody understands. <laughs> I know it is, but you know, it, I, I thought if I don't do it's like that, your then, emu. Yeah, it's basically, like your emu. honestly, that is what it's like. It's like I've got this uncontrollable puppet yeah. that I'm I'm well, sort of in control of, but but not really because it's me with the sensor off. Yeah. You know, it's like, what would I, what's the worst thing I could say in this yeah. situation? Well, I'll say that. So, so what does Angelos think of all this, this proper acting, all this lip syncing to the diaries of blind people and doing Ben Wheatley? Well, it's all a, it's all a bit of a joke in it. I mean, it just pays the rent and it does this and it does that, but none of it really makes any difference to anything. You is, know? It, is it getting in the way of what you want to do or yeah. what you want to? But yeah, yeah, it gets in the way. It gets in the way. I mean, it's a nice holiday for me um, when he does them things. But, um, you know, I'd rather it was me front and centre. Yeah. And it was all about me, to be honest yeah. with you. You know? Because I like to be centre stage. And I deserve to be as well because I've got a lot to offer. How do you feel being around people like Tom Hiddleston and Sienna Miller and these these beautiful Hollywood stars um, when it said you kind of you're not getting to be centre stage and they mm. and they are well you say these people are stars but I say that they are um, what I like to call members of the lucky club right right because you know they aren't all that you know and they um, they just they just make it up as they go along. I've, I watched them. I watched the technique. I watched them how they do it. And yeah. it's literally like they look at the pages with the lines on it, and then they go and then they say them in front of the camera, 
And I think to myself, well, anyone can do that. Simple mate. as that. Yes, that's how it is. Very, very simple stuff. You so, know, they're not, they're not down the mine, yeah. you know? So having seen behind the curtain, what kind of movie franchise would you like to see, you know, fronted by Angelos? Is there well, I'd like a to superhero see, or, you know? Well, yeah, it I, is a superhero story. It would be called the Angelos Epiphemia story. Yeah. And I would go and save things, Yeah, you know, like... Um, like proper things though that need saving, yeah. like the sewage system. Right, I'd yeah. go and sort that out. That's essential, you know. Or else I'd go and um, sort out like things like um, the runway, yeah. you know, uh, Heathrow Which runway. runway. The Heathrow, right, right. I'd go and sort that out if that needed sorting right. out. You yeah. know, I create problems for myself. Yeah, that well, I could then solve, and I wouldn't tell anyone that I had created a problem. I like when you get. Um, Firemen who are arsonists. Yeah, that sort of thing. thing. That's exactly it. Yeah. That's exactly it. Yeah. I would be like an arsonist fireman. Like yeah. I'd, like I'd start a fire. Like, what's that film? Um, I like that film. With Kurt Russell. Backdraft. Backdraft, yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'd do something like Backdraft, but with um, the, the sewers. Yeah. You <laughs> know? <laughs> You could make a mess and block it up and then... Yeah, then, I could block then, up then the sewers with a homemade fatberg, yeah. you know, or yeah. take a couple of bricks out here and there, cause a leak, Perfect. and then there'd be all sorts of, like, up at the head office, they'd be like, there's a problem with the sewage system. And I'd say, oh, don't worry, guys, I should go down there and sort it out. And of course, I know exactly what the problem is because I've caused it. Yeah. And so when I fix the problem, it's all like, oh, front page, Angelos, front page, front page. And, and, and how would you feel leaving behind people like Brian Gittins, like Vic and Bob and all no these other people who, who haven't all. made that transition into Hollywood, yeah. in, you know, as you're going off to be a superhero? I wouldn't feel a thing about it. Yeah. I would feel like, yes, this is exactly where I should be. I should be living in um, Beverly Pills and I should be up there doing all them things and seeing what going on red carpets yeah. and going to the Oscars and all that stuff. And that's exactly where I should be. And I couldn't give a shit about them people. How, how, how would you feel if you've got the Angelos movie, it's being made by yeah. Fox, right. big people, script written by James by Gunn or by you yeah well well, that's the problem because what if you get there and you've got some dialogue and one of the bits of dialogue is um the popular saying and it could be something that he says before going into battle but the saying of sticks and stones may break my yeah, bones yeah my shows but 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 names nice never, nice yeah yeah, so yeah how would you feel because that i mean it's a bit of a tongue twister yeah but that would be the name of the movie R- right yeah right if I, I would call it Sticks and Stones from a straight Stones at Nice and I Stones at Yeah, yeah. Right? But I don't know if I would be allowed to call it that because that is quite a long name on the it's thing outside name. the cinema. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know what the legalities of that are. I'd have to speak to um, Rupert Murdoch or someone. It's a tough one. You, you, yeah, you'd have to ask around. So yeah, well. I'd speak to the head of the studio, which is yeah. Rupert Murdoch, I think. And get the name in there. Because, again... Long names are quite popular these days. Yeah. There was that, that free, free billboard outside, outside. Mesh and Vesfe. Yeah, exactly. So things like that, it it works and it stands out. So maybe that could be, there's not been a superhero movie that's had... It's had a science, mate. Right, science, 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 mate. Yeah. Yeah, I know. There hasn't been that yet. Um, it's only a matter of time. Yeah, I mm. love it. Well, so mm. so <laughs> all that aside, yes. what's ahead for Dan? Oh. Um... um. <laughs> What well, is your aim for, or, or for your your plans for 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 the fringe for Angelos and uh, yeah, so yeah, is a weird one on on mm. on plans and particularly yeah. in, in in this industry. So, are you someone who's kind of chasing stuff or pushing the, or are you kind of aware that you've you've done a lot of stuff already? So it's mm. kind of it's a case of waiting to see what comes at what time. No, I think it's I'm always doing stuff. Always, yeah, um, I'm, I'm writing a couple of pilots for um itv at the moment yeah um who knows what will happen with those yeah um and um you know doing an edinburgh show and i'm doing some filming for some different things at the moment and um um but i mean it's hard isn't it to sort of plan you know anything it's just it's literally like 
ridiculous. It's like, oh, what idea should I write? You know, because yeah. I because I never bother with um, treatment documents and, yeah. and pitching ideas to yeah. producers or any of that stuff. I just think if I've got an idea and I want to write it, then I'll just write it, and then I'll and then I'll see if anyone wants it's, it. It's it's the way I'm wired as well. I've, yeah, I've been told a lot recently about, um, and it's fascinating, and I think it's true the power of the blank page. So yeah. the, uh, the 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 power of a treatment document. If if you give someone if you tell a production company or whatever your, your idea, then they can see all the ways it could be amazing. If you give them your finished p- product, then they can see all the ways that they think they could do it better. Yeah, yeah. But, but that hasn't changed me at all. I still have to sit there and go, here's, yeah, right, exactly. I'll write this idea, I'll write this script, and yeah. then go I go think so. And I, I just, like, I don't want, I don't know if it's like a controlling thing or yeah. whatever it is, but I don't want to suggest an idea to someone and then for them to come back, go, yeah, but what if this character was this? Yeah. And what if this? Because I just think, well, get someone else then. Yeah. You know, because yeah, it's. That's I'll, not what it is. Exactly. It's this. This character yeah. is this. And if it's not the right time or if it's not, you know, it doesn't make me terribly commercial. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, Angelos was never commercial. Yeah. You know, I, exactly. I had people that, you know, look after me saying, Dan, you'll never get anywhere with this character. Yeah. You know, you you, you, you need to come up with something else because this is, you know, it's just not going to, yeah. it's just not going to work. And I was, and I thought it is going to work. Yeah. It's going to work. And, and, and even if it's not going to work in a way that you think it's going to work, it works for me because it's funny, you know, yeah. and I'm enjoying myself. And um, that's the key part, right? Because mm. it, it must be more, more, I would much rather be working on a small level or mid level with something I love and am passionate about than working on a high level with something I think this is shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's paying the bills, but this is oh That was a that was an eye opener actually in the, in the you know right at the beginning of my working life in this yeah. business because before I did this I did like you know I did all sorts of jobs, all yeah. sorts of jobs, you yeah. know, and and so you spend your time thinking, and I was a courier, push, yeah. push bike courier. So I would go around all those places in Soho, yeah. you know, all those editing places and studios yeah, yeah, and yeah. thinking, oh God, I wish I, I wish I could be in here being doing here. some stuff yeah. rather than delivering the packages to, yeah. you, you know, and then you get there and you think, oh wow. Um, so all of, you know, you, you have, a, I had a long period of time thinking about what it would be like to, to do what I wanted to do. Yeah. And then the first job I did was, uh, absolute sh- you know i thought like, it was a sketch show yeah. on television and uh, i got to do my own character that i had written and it was an absolute shambles right yeah and um to the point and it, and it was just a series of unfortunate events that happened and it yeah. wasn't anybody's fault or any, yeah, you know yeah, nobody yeah. was to blame um but it got to the point where the first assistant director came up to me and said Dan, I know you haven't done very much in television before, but take it from me, this is not how TV is made, right. <laughs> you know. Right. Um, and I thought, thank God you said that because this is horrible. Yeah. And this is all, this is what I wanted to do and I'm doing it and it's horrible. Yeah. You know, yeah. so so it, don't it, be pu- it made don't be me put think. Off by this. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so it made me think from a sort of, you know, from an early off thinking, right, I need to be doing stuff. It's all very well doing stuff mm. but i need to be doing stuff that i want to be doing yeah you know, finding a way of finding a way of doing that you know because you've got to be there and you've got to commit a certain amount of time and yeah. i'd imagine even more so as 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 a family man now you know mm. the, yeah. being a father yeah. and stuff like that means if you're going to be taken away yeah make sure it's, it's got to be worthwhile. something that you care about right yeah, has, has that affected your outlook on career and yeah. things like that i think it has um you know, because as you say, it's like your time becomes much more precious yeah. and limited. And if you're going out at night, then you need to make it worth your while. Yeah, you know, you of need course. to, you need to make, you, you don't want to be just winging it. You want to be turning up and going, I, yeah. I believe in this and, you know, and I, and I want to be doing this rather yeah. than any sort of, you know, oh, blimey, come on. And I know that so any way through a creative process, you have that. You yeah, have that of sort of period of like, what the what fuck am I doing, man? <laughs> you know, but I, but you sort of have enough um, experience to know that 
yeah, you'll come out the other end of that and it will be a good, you know, it'll be a good thing that you end up with, yeah. you know, or, or even if it's not a good thing you end up with, it was worth trying. Yeah. It's you know? worth the process exactly. and the learning of it. And the, yeah. yeah. Or, or the failure or whatever yeah. it is, you know, but to just be sort of doing stuff because someone's wants you to do it and it's, you know, it's a great big block of time and yeah. it becomes less important or it less, becomes less um, enticing, I yeah. suppose, yeah. in a way that when you're starting out, you just take everything. Yeah, you know, completely. Everything, yeah. everything that comes your way. I yeah. get that. And and that makes makes perfect sense because then if you can choose to have the excitement of the the one job I'm doing this year, is working with Ben Wheatley on this huge thing. The one yeah. job I'm doing is this, rather exactly. than yeah, yeah. I've got a couple of months on this project and things yeah. like that. It's like having those months being exciting. Yeah, is far more. Well, it's, it, whenever you sort of work on these things, you always find nice people. I think that also, you know, that's also a big, it's a big part of it. Yeah. You know, if you're working with people that you can, when you, when you're not filming, you just sit down on in those chairs and chat good yeah. stuff and yeah. have, a, have a nice conversation with them then that's really, that's, that's all part of it, you know? Completely. I really think that's is. absolutely key. And I also think, again, this is just from my limited experience, but realising early on that it's an industry that's full of hugely intensified bursts of moments. Mm-hmm. So you will have, you may have a friendship that is the deepest thing in that yeah, month. And exactly. then you might not talk for a year or two because yeah, they're it. then onto another project and you're onto another project yeah. and there's nothing wrong with that. I think no. the problem can be if you start to get offended, but well, I thought we were really, <laughs> this, we really it's like, yeah. no, it was an intense thing in that moment. And exactly. then you're onto the next project. It's like, and that's, it's like, that's a, the it's like a brief love affair, Yeah, you know, and, it, and it's like, yeah, because you're spending every day, all day together all day, every day. and you're making each other laugh and all the, and then, but then you go on to something else and you get distracted by somebody else. Yeah. And you know, that's just, that's how it is. That's the beauty of it. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll wrap things up now as we've gone comfortably over an hour. So thank you very much it's a for your time. It's been an absolute a pleasure. Yeah. And, and where can thank people you. keep up to date? You're on social Twitter. media and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> go on Twitter at Epithemia. I haven't got a website or anything like yeah. that, but you know, just, uh, and if I'm doing anything, It'll be it'll be there. It'll be tweeted about. People find out about. somehow. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> oh, thanks for coming. Cheers, Cheers. mate.